Up until Mists of Pandaria, World of Warcraft's talent system was the talent tree system. Talents were an ever-evolving aspect of the game, and they were one of the most important aspects. The talent trees in Vanilla were meant to help determine playstyle. If you're a warrior who puts more talents into protection, for instance, you're tankier. If you put more points into arms, then you're more into weapons. The system sounded good on paper, and there were some design flaws to that end with this system, but those design flaws were essentially invalidated by the evolving metagame. Players weren't looking at the talent trees to ask the question, how can I make this more geared to my playstyle? They were looking at the talent trees and asking, how can I min-max myself for my chosen role? The trees evolved with the min-maxing metagame in mind, and by the time Cataclysm rolled around, those trees were scrunched and the choices in them for your playstyle were almost non-existent. The choices for Blizzard were pretty narrow, too. They pretty much only had four ways to get an ability on your spell bar. They could make it trainable, in which case all three specs would get it. They could give it to you at level 10 when you chose your spec. They could make it a shallow talent in the trees, which meant that any spec could get it if they pay the price. Or they could make it a deep talent, which means that only one spec can get it. Or a player who chooses that spec could conceivably skip it if they happen to be underinformed or over-medicated at the time they choose how to spend their talent points. The talent tree system tied Blizzard's hands. It forced them to put spells that were not frequently used onto players' spell bars. For instance, Inquisition was for all three Paladin specs, and it was also tied into Protection's kit. For another example, all three specs had Divine Plea, and in fact Retribution's mana costs were tuned around it. It was worked into Protection's kit as well, as a passive that was always active. Also, with the Talent Tree system, if Blizzard wanted to make a nifty ability a choice for players that players had to sacrifice or spend something else in order to get, they pretty much had to make it a deep talent, meaning that only one spec got that ability. They could have made it a shallow talent, but shallow talents aren't really for nifty things, and they almost never use the shallow talent system to give you an active ability. For that matter, Blizzard doesn't have a way with this old system to give two specs one ability if they want to. Giving two specs the same level 10 signing bonus would be a little bit too tacky. Blizzard decided to try to solve these problems in Mists of Pandaria. They did this mostly by making talents no longer spec-specific, and they added a new category of trainables. Trainables that only certain specs could learn. At this point, talents were all about playstyle. Granted, if Blizzard didn't do a good job balancing the numbers on a given tier, min-maxing was still an issue. But even so, this new system allowed Blizzard to make abilities available to all specs as choices that once were one spec only. And if there was an ability they wanted two specs to have, but wanted to keep out of the hands of one spec, Blizzard had options to do that too. Then there's something that Blizzard thinks is a solution, which I think is a problem. They could clean up players' spell bars even when players didn't want them to. For instance, I had Inquisition and Cataclysm, which let me spend Holy Power on something that dealt damage. While Inquisition wasn't as impressive as an ability that went boom and hit an enemy with big damage, I'm not too impressed with Glyph of Harsh Words, since it barely does more damage than Holy Shock. Also, and this is something I've made three or four videos about already, I had Holy Wrath and Consecration in Cataclysm, which let me deal with groups of enemies. Blizzard... <coughs> cleaned those up off of my spell bar in Mists of Pandaria, which was not a good move. In Mists of Pandaria, Blizzard invented swarms of small enemies which were very clearly intended to be AoE'd down, which is a nice change from fighting one mob at a time if you have AoE damage, which Holy Paladins did not. This is another clear case of Blizzard not thinking a change through carefully before doing it. Now, don't get me wrong, it should be and was a higher priority for Blizzard to make sure that healers were good at healing and could have fun healing than it is for them to worry about healer damage kits. And to be fair, I could heal pretty well. Healing was reasonably fun in Mists of Pandaria. I didn't want them to make giving Holy Paladins AoE damage their top priority, but I kept thinking that this is a minor change, it would probably take only a few man hours, it would solve my problem, and I was absolutely bewildered about why Blizzard didn't freaking fix the problem already. But after making this video series and researching Myst's problems, I realized two things. First of all, compared to Myst's other problems, this really was minor. I did feel and do feel strongly about it, but compared to its other problems, to put it in perspective, let's say that we were talking about an article in a magazine instead of a game's expansion. 
me complaining that holy paladins have no AoE would be like me complaining that 30% of an article's lowercase as I's are not dotted, while that article was written in barely comprehensible English, and when you finally did understand it, it was obviously a pack of lies. That really puts it in perspective. That's the first thing I realized. The second thing I realized was that since Blizzard was actually devoting a lot of resources to making huge changes to try to fix these problems, they did not have time budget to fix problems that were affecting just a few players. Blizzard's employees were too busy running around like chickens with their heads cut off and with about as much intelligence to think about Holy's lack of AoE damage. I've already given some examples of the kinds of problems Blizzard was dealing with in my progression video. But, since there's another problem that has to do with class design and maybe even a little to do with professions too, I'm going to go out of my comfort zone and talk about something I have avoided in this series up until now. PvP. I make no secret of the fact that I generally don't do player versus player. I've only heard about these problems secondhand, my information about them isn't totally complete, and I certainly didn't experience them myself, thank the light, but they're so big I just have to comment on them here. Now, to be fair to Blizzard, the new talent system did create a lot of real playstyle choices that the old system didn't. But Blizzard had to put things into the new talent system that appealed to every spec and that did not help with min-maxing. That meant they had to add things to players' spell bars like resource management, mobility, and, you guessed it, crowd control. I'm guessing that the influx of crowd control abilities into players' kits contributed to the problem in Mists where the metagame was all about crowd controlling the other team. This is a terrible direction for the metagame to go in, and here's why. Games, by definition, are supposed to be fun. That's the reason why I feel so strongly about Holy Paladins having no AoE damage in Mists when most of my viewers are thinking that it's a minor problem at most. It is not fun to have to single target each of these small enemies. Think about how annoying it was before they added AoE looting and mists. Multiply that annoyance by 10 and you've got the annoyance of soloing as a holy paladin. But I digress. My intended point is, my philosophy is that games in general are supposed to be fun. Fun entails making meaningful decisions that have an effect on the game. But while a player is crowd controlled, like so many were in Myst's PvP environment, they are not making any decisions whatsoever. They are just stuck where they are until the crowd control effect breaks. That, like the boring and frustrating I mentioned in my last video, is also the opposite of fun. And then there's the gearing and stats. Blizzard had a PvP stat called Resilience that's been around since the Burning Crusade. It lowered the damage you took from players. Blizzard added a second PvP stat in Mists called PvP Power. Having two stats on PvP gear that didn't appear at all on PvE gear meant that players who were geared for PvP had an overpowering advantage over any PvE-geared players who dared venture into the PvP content. This created an insurmountable barrier to entry that Blizzard had not intended to be there, so Blizzard rolled up its sleeves and changed the stats. They made Resilience baseline so that it was no longer on gear. If they had timed this change correctly so that PvP gear and PvE gear were about on par, this might have worked. But PvE gear had gotten ahead of PvP gear by that point, so PvE geared players were now absolutely owning player versus player geared players. That's right, PvP gear was a liability in PvP when it was supposed to be an asset. Blizzard was clearly not paying attention to item levels and how they were moving throughout the expansion. They did pay attention to that kind of thing in Cataclysm, and in fact, Blizzard changed the item level on craftable PvP gear in Cataclysm so that it would be easier for players to catch up. That is the kind of effort Blizzard was unwilling, or given their headless chicken state, unable to put into professions and mists. One example of this is Spirits of Harmony. In Wrath of the Lich King, Frost Orbs became tradable after a while, and Chaos Orbs eventually were tradable in Cataclysm as well. Spirits of Harmony, which are kind of the Mists of Pandaria equivalent, are still Bind on Pickup. This kind of leaves me wondering if they'll remain Bind on Pickup in Warlords too, which would be super annoying for anyone trying to level their professions using these orbs going from 85 to 90. It would be like scribes and jewelers having to grind Wrath of the Lich King content to get profession items all over again. That actually happened in Cataclysm. Another example of how Blizzard didn't make changes to professions over time, epic level gems, or rather, the lack thereof. 
In all three expansions, Blizzard started the expansion with uncommon and rare level gems, and then as later patches were released, epic level gems were added to the mix. Blizzard never added epic level gems in Mists. You know, with fewer gems and elemental items, it kind of seems like Blizzard is taking a lot of variety out of professions. In fact, Blizzard didn't even allow uncommon or rare gems to drop when you're mining. Since there were no elements to get off of mining nodes either, that meant that you only ever got ore when you mine. And even when you get the ancient Pandaren mining pick to reverse that annoyance, the drop rate on gems is so low that farming ore for a day and getting no gems at all is normal. Getting other things out of these mining nodes, such as stone in vanilla, elements in any expansion, or gems in any part of the game besides mists, was fun, and it was something that made mining more interesting. And Blizzard took the fun, interesting aspect of this profession out of the game. Why? Did they need to take those gems and stones and put them inside their own heads because the rock collection in there wasn't big enough already? And that's not all the variety that left the game in mists. As an engineer, it felt like Blizzard had brought me from having three metals to work with in Cataclysm to having only two and a half metals to work with. Or maybe one and three halves metals to work with, since the uncommon metal, Trillium, was smelted, not from two ore the way Titanium and Pyrium were, but from four ore. You needed two white ore and two black ore to make one Trillium bar. I understand what Blizzard was aiming for with the yin-yang visual, but the actual result of it was an annoying system where you always have too little or too much of one type of ore, and the sheer fact that you needed four ore to make one bar was also annoying. The starting common metal was ghost iron, and while kyperite was kind of like a second uncommon metal and probably looked exactly like a second uncommon metal to blacksmiths, only one engineering craftable took it, and that was the ultra-expensive goblin engineering mount. Ugh, I hated those mounts. You know, when I first saw those mounts, I took it as a hint that Blizzard was trying to make a noticeable, flavorful difference between Goblin and Gnomish Engineering again. Gnomes could make one mount, and Goblins could make another. This was a throwback to Wrath of the Lich King, where engineers could make the awesome Mechgineer's chopper mount, which was one of the first few mounts that could take passengers ever. I made good money selling those mounts in Wrath, and I expected to make good money selling those things in Mists. To be fair, Blizzard probably expected players to make good money on them too, but since Blizzard made the mystery orbs so that they weren't bind on pickup, any player who found a way to squeeze the price on those mystery orbs, such as buying them on the auction house from players whose accounts got hacked, could lower the final selling price to the point where I couldn't sell this mount at a profit. The price of three mystery orbs is 60k gold, and that's not even counting the living steel I had to buy on the auction house to make this thing. The price of the final product went below 60,000 gold. At that point, I said, screw it. I sank almost 70,000 gold into this stupid thing. I want as much of that gold back as I can get now. I had to sell that stupid mount at a loss. I should have made thousands of gold off of that mount, but I lost thousands of gold instead. And one teeny tiny little tweak would have prevented that. What should have been an awesome experience for me was made incredibly sucky, and that just about sums up the problems with the expansion, doesn't it? Of course, I found a silver lining when it came to progression, and I have found one here too. While I had been hoping that Blizzard would make goblin and gnome-specific tinkers and trinkets like they had in vanilla in the Burning Crusade, and they didn't make those, at least Blizzard made an attempt at reinventing those specializations and reinventing engineering as a profession that could provide players with nice cosmetic pluses. That is a concept I can get behind. For instance, I would love it if Blizzard gave engineers recipes to craft epic-looking guns that could be used for transmogrification. Also, early on in the beta, Blizzard was asking what they could do to add to engineering to make it epic, and a portable anvil and forge was at the top of the list, and that is exactly what we got. Plus, the old flavor of being able to craft bombs at a town and use them in the field was back. The only problem is that I had to make liberal use of them since I didn't have an AoE damage ability until maximum level. And while these explosives didn't have the same variety that they did in Vanilla or the Burning Crusade, it was definitely a step in the right direction. So, once again, Blizzard tried a lot of experiments and mists when it came to class design. Some of them were successes like the new talent system, and others, like in PvP, were huge, painful mistakes. And once again, we can hope, and are hoping, that they'll learn their lesson in Warlords, and I'll talk about Warlords next time to wrap up the series.